Üdvözlet, remélem hasznosnak találod ezt a videót, és amennyiben igen, az infobubble.hu weboldalon számos ilyen, és ehhez hasonló tartalmat találsz. Arra kérlek, hogy oszd meg ezt a videót, és lájkold, hogy több emberhez eljusson ez az üzenet, és találkozunk az infobubble.hu weboldalon. By now, you are no doubt familiar with the World Economic Forum's phrase, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Though I believe that the Great Reset, Agenda 21 and the Fourth Industrial Revolution that are being prepared for humanity are very much a hybrid of fascism and communism. But just like the Bolshevik Revolution of Soviet Russia and the Marxist ideas that underpinned it, private property rights are to be made a thing of the past. By acclimatizing Westerners to aspects of socialism over a long period of time, socialized health care, socialized housing, welfare, public education, state supports, and high taxation, including property taxes, as well as endless talk about equality, feminism, and equity outcomes and affirmative action, etc., it has laid the groundwork for the gradual introduction of communism. Property tax is absolute evil. It serves no benefit to the homeowner and offers no value in return. It undermines the very concept of home ownership and private property. Even if the tax is as little as one dollar or one euro a year, it's totally abhorrent. The idea being that failure to pay the property tax will result in a fine, and eventually the day will come when the property will be seized by the state. This essentially means that the state believes that it owns your property anyway, It is acting like a landlord, leasing the property to you as if you're a tenant, so long as you pay the rent, which is the property tax. How this tax wasn't resisted by European peoples with everything they have is just beyond me. Property taxes initially start off as being fairly low, so as not to cause too much resistance. But gradually, governments increase them over the decades. Once they're introduced, the government essentially has their foot in the door of your property. The socialist policies that our countries have succumbed to over the past few decades have softened up the populace for more and more government overreach. Property taxes can slowly be incrementally increased for any reason, as an extra source of revenue or for arbitrary justifications such as the size of the dwelling or the number of rooms inside it. In Ireland, there are plans for a right to housing bill to be put before the people in the form of a referendum. It says, part two, the state in particular recognizes the common good, there's that phrase again, as including the right to secure affordable, dignified housing appropriate to need for all the residents of Ireland, not citizens, but residents, and shall guarantee this right through its laws, policies, and the prioritization of resources, sounds like redistribution of wealth, The state, accordingly, shall delimit the right of private property where it is necessary to ensure the common good and to vindicate the said right to housing for all residents of Ireland. Now, on paper, the right to a house for everyone seems fair, right? Of course, there's a big difference between the right to housing and the right to owning a home of your own. Housing just means a literal roof over your head that you don't necessarily own. If the state can delimit someone else's right to private property, then the very idea of private property means nothing. This is just seizing other people's assets and redistributing wealth, which is Marxism 101. From what I understand under Agenda 21, in the future, property taxes will be increased substantially under the guise of equality. With so much debt and poverty being created at the moment due to lockdowns and the destruction of businesses, millions of people will be unable to secure employment and home ownership will become increasingly impossible. House prices will be artificially inflated to keep those on low and middle income from being able to even consider buying a property. So they will have to rent a place. There will be a narrative generated to stoke the politics of envy, which is common in communist countries. The public will be propagandized to have great animosity towards anyone who owns a home. Homeowners will be like the kulaks. Even if they've worked all their lives to pay off their mortgage, there will be resentment. Imagine a scenario where you own your house, but your next door neighbor is having to rent his house. He's struggling to save enough money for a deposit for his mortgage, 
whereas you either outright own your property or you're currently paying off yours. The argument will be made that you basically stole your house because you purchased it under the old capitalist system, which was exploitative, and you must have been able to pay for it because you're a cisgender white male who inherited white privilege from his racist ancestors, etc., etc. You benefited from such a system. Because we're all now supposed to live in a wonderful, equitable communist utopia, you should not be permitted to have any advantage over your neighbor. So, even if you own your home outright, you will have to pay, in property taxes, the same monthly value, the same amount of monthly rent that your neighbor pays. And what will happen is the size of your house will determine how many potential bedrooms you have. This might sound insane, but keep in mind that here in Ireland, people once had light taxes determined by the size of their windows. Here's an article from January of 2021 from the Irish Examiner about a European Commission study. 92% of older people live in homes that are too big. Almost 7 in 10 people in Ireland are living in homes that are too large for their household needs. New figures published by the European Commission show that Ireland has one of the highest rates of people living in under-occupied dwellings in the EU. This is not an issue, by the way, for the millionaires and billionaires of the world. They can have massive mansions. <laughs> Official statistics released by Eurostat reveal that 69.6% .6 of Irish people were living in dwellings deemed too large for their needs in 2019. Who determines if it's too large? What's considered too large for a person? In terms of excess rooms and, more specifically, bedrooms, over twice the EU average of 32.7%. Only Malta and Cyprus had higher rates of under-occupied homes than Ireland. This is a non-problem, but you can see where this is leading. The classic cause of under-occupation is older individuals or couples remaining in their home after their children have grown up and left, while family breakdown can also result in under-occupation, a Eurostat spokesperson said. This is really alarming. On average, there are 2.1 rooms per person in Irish households compared to the EU average of 1.6 rooms. I can't believe what I'm reading. Megkérnék mindenkit arra, hogy lájkoljátok, illetve osszátok meg tartalmainkat, melyeket megtalálhattok infobaba, illetve Yahoo útja néven, TikTokon, Instagramon, YouTube-on, Facebookon, valamint weboldalainkon. És ha hasznosnak, értékesnek találjátok munkánkat, akkor támogassátok azt köszönöm azoknak, akik ezt megtették eddig. The Republic's high rate is believed to be linked to the large number of adults living in empty nest households and the relatively larger size of traditional Irish families and associated need for more bedrooms compared to most other European countries. The latest figures show that over 92% of older people in Ireland are living in homes that are considered too big for their actual needs. Again, considered by whom? In contrast, only 3.2% of the Irish population were classified as living in overcrowded households in 2019, although the figure has increased from 2.7% the previous year. Overcrowded accommodation is considered to be any dwelling that does not have the number of rooms appropriate to the size of the household, what's appropriate to the size of the household, the family situation and ages of its members. First of all, why is the size of a person's home and number of occupants inside it any business of the EU who gets to determine if a house is the appropriate size for the person or persons living in it. An elderly person whose children have now left the family home has every right to live in their home alone if they wish. It belongs to them. Determining the number of rooms in Irish households as being too much is just insanity. Again, this won't be happening to millionaires and billionaires. The technocrats will not be having this problem, no matter how big their mansions are or however many mansions they own. This is insanity. This article is from June 24th, 2021 from The Independent. Tishok Michal Martin. There will be new incentives for older people to downsize and free up homes for families. Elderly people living in large homes would be incentivized to move to smaller ones through a mix of tax incentives and grants under new plans being considered by the government. Ahead of the publication of the Housing for All plan next month, Taoiseach Michal Martin told the Irish Independent that measures being examined include incentives for right-sizing. Who determines what kind of a dwelling is the right size for a person? 
There's lots of housing out there where people may downsize, for example, if there was a good incentive to downsize, Mr. Martin said in an interview with the Irish Independent. So can we use more of the existing housing stock, for example, for people to downsize voluntarily, obviously, and make it incentivized? I mean, initially masks were voluntary, then they were mandated on public transport and in shops. Remember that? It is among a number of measures being considered under plans to address the housing crisis. Grants for prospective homeowners to refurbish dilapidated housing are also being examined. A vacant property tax is being looked at to incentivize people to develop the properties and get them into use, the Taoiseach said. It should go without saying that the reason we have a housing crisis in this country is simply because successive globalism-supporting Irish governments have pursued an open borders immigration policy for several decades now. The supply of housing simply cannot meet the demand, and thus house prices have become insanely high. But of course, the mess created by the government will once again become one that the Irish people are expected to resolve. And you know what? When Michal Martin talks about tax incentives there, I suspect eventually there could be tax penalties, increases in property taxes for those deemed to be living in homes too large for them. And when the economy collapses and the government no longer has the money to buy or build new homes to house the entire planet, be they Ukrainian passport holders or the climate refugees we've been told are coming in the future, there will be huge pressure placed on homeowners to do the right thing and either open their homes and volunteer a bedroom or they will be guilted into surrendering their property for the greater good. Don't be selfish. Your house is way too big for you. Look at these poor people who don't have a home of their own. Why do you need all of that space when there's people really struggling, etc.? And of course, there could also be climate change arguments thrown in there as well about how it's not energy efficient in terms of carbon emissions for people to live in dwellings that are too large for them when they could live in a smaller, more energy efficient home and let a family take their home instead. And I can see exactly where this kind of discussion will inevitably lead to. Pressuring elderly people to give up their homes and move into shoebox Agenda 21 rabbit hutch apartments while their houses, which they bought, paid for and lived in for years, are taken from them and given to other people to live in. This can be done through the property tax. When a person goes to pay their property tax each year, they will be asked additional questions about the size of their house regardless as to what the various spare rooms are being used for a determination will be made that the house in question is a two three four five bedroom house etc and the property tax will increase accordingly perhaps even a tax could be applied to each additional unused bedroom the tax will become exorbitantly expensive, especially if that elderly person is eventually on the upcoming universal basic income, because the state can then design the tax in such a way that it is prohibitively expensive when compared to the income that the person is receiving from the state. Eventually, the elderly person will be unable to continue to justify living in that home and will be forced to consider moving to a smaller home with lower property taxes and selling their own home. This box apartment will likely be in a heavily surveilled Agenda 21 smart city. Of course, that's the coercive strategy that the state can employ to get the person out of their property. But they may eventually become much more aggressive than that and simply relocate the person to a smaller home by force. Some form of financial compensation may or may not be offered. All of these nightmarish scenarios can be stopped if a sufficient number of the public were to come to their senses and calm the heck down. At the moment, they continue to live in an emotionally hysterical state of fear and under a spell of mass psychosis and docility. It's extremely difficult to reason with the average person. Either way, we have our work cut out for us if the current technocratic takeover and the forthcoming Great Reset are to be stopped.